from lawyer. Your house was all right. Your husband used to love you. And now he no longer loves you. He no longer take you out. He, the robber of destiny entered you. Jesus, when he was born, at one day, he began to encounter problem from the government. Herod began to look for a young boy. Why? He had to smell destiny. The devil is a trick master. He smells destined people. He knows. That's the reason. I, told, I, told, I spoke last, last, last year. I said the devil, some of you, he cannot attack you because it is a waste of investment. The devil cannot attack some people because it's a waste of investment. You know why? Because it's a waste of time for the devil to attack the one he has already captured. Are you listening to me here? There are about 21 robbers of destiny. Now, the thief comes for three missions. Number one is to do what? To steal. Number two, it is to kill. Number three, it is to destroy. Some of you, I will show you today, some of you, your destiny were stolen. Your husbands were stolen. You once had it. You once had it in your hands. You once had money. And no, you no longer have money. It was stolen away from you. The first level, look, which means the thief or the robber comes for three missions. If he does not steal, he will kill. Some of you, your destiny are killed. <laughs> you no longer have a destiny. <laughs> you, you are here on earth just for existence. There are two kinds of people. There are those that live and there are those that exist. <laughs> have you ever seen people? <laughs> they were born without a wife, no child, no work. Huh? They, don't, they don't do anything. When they wake up, the only work they have, it is to chop, to eat. To drink beer. That's the only way. Are you listening to me here? So those that don't live, they exist. It's the existence. They were just there for the sake of existence. They are people that live. Some of you, your destinies were what? They were killed a long time. You don't have a destiny. You don't have anything remaining for you. <sighs> so the, the thief or the robber, he for three missions. That's the reason. You need to understand when you are a woman and a man of destiny. Because if you don't understand, the devil will steal from you and you will not know. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus saw all the missions of the devil and he said, okay, me, I have come with one mission. That mission, it is to give them life more abundantly. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. It is to restore to them, not what they had, Amen. but to restore to them times two, Amen. times three, Amen. times four, Amen. times... Oh, Amen. you are not hearing this. Amen. That was a mission of what? Jesus Christ. But you need to understand, child of God, how to deal with robbers of destiny. Because robbers of destiny, what they do, before you are born, in another way, their battle starts in your mother's womb. That's the reason when your mother, she was six months pregnant, the legs were too big. She, she was, she, the blood was too low. The iron was too low in the blood. It was a battle to show you that you are a woman and a man of destiny. Are you listening to me? Some of us, when the, the day when we are born, we were not on the budget because the devil knew that if we come out of our mother's womb, we shall be a... Some of us, the devil, he did not want us to come out of our mother's womb. That's the reason there was a delay on the way. There was offer to why the devil knew that if you come out, you will be a parasite in the kingdom of the devil. This devil that they draw, he say they draw him with very black, very black with with two horns. Do you know the devil? You? <coughs> he says he's very dark, yeah. and he has got two horns. Yeah, eh, eh. The Bible. 
Bible says he transformed himself into an angel of light. When you want, look, when we talk about a robber, a robber, a robber is not a thief. Oh. A robber is a very professional thief that can steal while your eyes are open. How? While your eyes are open, he's taking money from your pocket. While you are laughing, he's taking your car. Uh. Some of you, you don't know how it happened. During the day, you lost property. Uh. During the day, you lost your husband. Uh. During the day, you lost money. Why? He came as a robber. Now, you need to understand, as you are on your way to destiny, there is 21 robbers that you need to kill. You need to confront. Let me tell you, any problem you don't confront, that problem will supersede you. Confrontation of an issue, that wa that's what brings promotion in the life of the person. Whatever you cannot confront or whatever you tolerate, you can never terminate. On your way to destination, you must be ready to confront the devil. You must be ready to look at him in his own eyes and tell the devil, he said, the next time you touch me, I will remove your teeth. I will break you. I will break your backbone. Are you listening to me here? Amen. That is what we call confrontation. Amen. Now, let's look at one robber of destiny. Number one, discouragement. One robber of destiny. It is discouragement. Every time when the devil wants to paralyze your destiny, he will give you discouragement. What is discouragement? Discouragement is the ability to feel not worthy, to feel, to feel not powerful, to feel very low, to feel not needed, to feel like you are forsaken. Discouragement, it is a robber of destiny. Are you listening to me here? That's a reason on your way to destiny. You must never be discouraged. The moment you are discouraged, you are about your destiny. Discouragement is a robber of destiny. I will show you. Read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Discouragement. People are discouraged in church. Even when Jesus died, when Jesus died, Peter was discouraged. He ran away from the Messiah. Discouragement will make you run away from your destiny. Read. Read for me. One, two, three, go. Thank you, Baba. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, and it reads, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, Listen, it came to pass when David, the mighty man, the king, the man of destiny. Uh -huh. When David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south uh -huh. and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons... Listen, listen. The Bible says when David the king, a man of destiny, when they reached Ziklag, the Bible says the children and the wives. Let me tell you, if you want to see how a man is very strong, take his wife and children. Amen. Are you listening to me here? The Bible said they took his wife and they took his children. And the Bible said the mighty men, the soldiers, the powerful men of the city, the Bible said they had to throw their sword. They had to throw their weapons. They began to cry discouragement. Discouragement to make you throw your weapon in the time of battle. In the time of battle, for you to fight the devil, you will throw your weapon and Amen. the devil will kill you like a chicken. Amen. They had to throw their weapons and they began to, they sat down, they began crying, foolishness. Are you listening? <laughs> I repeat again, discouragement will make you throw your weapon in the battlefield. While the devil is coming,
morning you will throw your weapon, you'll be like a coward. You'll be like a dog. You know a dog? Eh? When he sees a bigger dog, it will take its tail, put it between the leg, and begin to urinate on itself. Are you listening to me here? Amen. That's a dog. A coward dog. A discouraged dog. Begins to urinate on itself during the time of battle. Why can't it hold the, 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 the urine? Now you want to urinate in the time of battle. <laughs> the devil, he wants to kill you. He, <laughs> you know there are some people. Discouragement makes them to urinate during the time of battle. The devil has got no time. And you listen to me here. Amen. He wants to kill you. He wants to waste you. There is no time to waste the time in the battlefield. So discouragement is a robber of destiny. The Bible said the mighty men and David, they had to throw their weapons. They sat down and the Bible said they began to cry like women. I said this one, I don't love women who cry. Oh. You want to be discouraged? Put women around you. <laughs> I've told you. If you want to be discouraged, put women around you. Amen. <laughs> I will show you. Do you know Job was discouraged by the wife? Um, uh, uh? Eh? You're not answering. Discouragement of Job. Job was ready. He said, If I want to die, let me die. The wife came. He said, Ah, you want to leave me with all these children? <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. The Bible said, David and his mighty men, they began to cry. They began to weep. They throw their weapons. They throw their weapons for the battlefield. And the Bible says, they sat down. They began to mourn. They began to mourn. And the Bible says, one of the man called David, he had to encourage himself. The opposite of encouragement is discouragement. Amen. There is nothing that will make the devil to finish you like discouragement. Whenever you are discouraged, you can never fight. Whenever you are discouraged, you can never lift up your head. That's the reason the Bible says, lift up your head. All you get be lifted up. You everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. You will never lift up your heads when you are discouraged. You will never worship God when you are discouraged. Discouragement is an instrument to paralyze your destiny. Amen. We have a lot of discouraged women. <laughs> That's the reason a man comes and says, no, 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 you are like Peter. You, you are like John. Discouraged. They are not ready to move on. Because discouragement is like a hook. It's like a stronghold on their destiny. In my way to destiny, I do not permit discouragement. Whenever I meet discouragement, I know he's a thief. He has come to kill me. He has come to destroy me. What I do also, I am ready to destroy it. Many people, they are discouraged in church. They sit in church. They sit in church two years, three years, and no miracle. They are discouraged. They leave. Discouragement will cause you to move from your destined place to another place where it is a, it, it is a desert. Amen. Pastors are discouraged. They have been preaching for 20 years with 20 members. They say, ah, oh, it's better. God did not call me. I called God. The best thing, let me go and become a farmer. There is a prophet called Elijah. Elijah was a man of fire. On the way to destiny, he met a woman called Jezebel. Jezebel, she was a very informed woman. She was working with letters. Are you listening to me here? And the boss said she wrote a letter. She wrote a letter. In that letter, she had to put it plain what she would do to Elijah. And when Elijah heard that, he had to run away from him for his life. He said, if I stay here, I am finished. The man who got fire, he had to run away for his life. Discouragement will not allow you even to lift up your head. You will think like a chicken. Discouragement will... <laughs> if 
even if when you, you put on a suit of 5,000 rand, it will look like it's 500 rand. Even when a husband decides to appreciate you because your spirit is discouraged. Some of you, you are operating on low battery. You need what we call booster. We must boost your spiritual life. We must boost your faith. We must boost your financial life. Amen. We must boost your attendance Amen. to change. Amen. Joshua chapter number one, verse nine. I want to show you. Robbers of destiny. My child, every time when you must go forward, you must understand how to deal with a robber of destiny. Are you there? Yes, I want Papa. us to read it on top of our voices. I want to show you what happened when the devil wants to finish you. He will give you discouragement. Read. Have not I commanded thee? Listen. This is God Almighty. He said that. Did I not tell you? Amen. I told you people. Oh yes. Uh -huh. Be strong and of a good hey, courage. Be strong and what? And of a good courage. And of a good courage. In yourself Amen. when things are not all right Amen. as you are going to your Amen. destination encourage yourself Amen. you know we have got too much children and babies in the church Amen. listen to me there is a level where your pastor is not there your prophet is not there your apostle is not there you are just alone Amen. where you must encourage yourself Amen. did I not tell you that be strong in the what? Read. Uh -huh. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Listen. Be strong. And be of what? Good courage. courage. So there is bad courage. Amen. Amen. Bad courage is, is, is whereby you are discouraged. You are tired. With this man, he's been drinking. Yet God is God wrote, He said, This man until death comes. And you are discouraged. He said, Ah, no, even if when he divorced me, ah, he's better. He's better. He's better. You stop cooking for him. When he comes, you look at him with a demonic eye. And you are praying, you say, Oh God, remove this whole bush away from my flesh. Discouragement. Discouragement. Amen. Many destinies are discouraged. Many pastors are discouraged. Many lives are discouraged. Many businesses are discouraged. Amen. Many, 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 many men of God are discouraged. They, look, they started very, very well. And from nowhere, discouragement entered them. Amen. Read, my son. Have not I commanded thee? Shh. I want us to read it together. Wait, I want us to read it together. One, two, three, go. Hey, let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Wait, another commandment that God has given us is a commandment of encouraging ourselves. <laughs> this one is not among, is it the 11 or what? The 10, the 10 commandments. The 10 commandments. This one is another one. God said, have I not commanded you? Amen. Huh? So it is a command Amen. of encouragement. Amen. Are you listening to me here? Amen. Encouragement is a command from the Lord. God wants you to encourage yourself. Do you know what it means to encourage yourself? You are waiting for people to appreciate you. Begin to appreciate yourself. Amen. Are you listening to me here? I have seen people who hate my face. I have seen people who hate my color. I have seen people who hate everything about me. When I see them, I begin to... Amen. Look. Let me tell you. The wife... Adam is looking for the wife, not knowing that he has a wife. Stop looking for people to encourage you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Stop looking for people to encourage you. Amen. Because whatever you are looking for, it is inside you. Amen. God did not go outside of Adam. Amen. He had to go inside Adam Amen. and remove Eve. Yes. I am not talking to somebody here. Amen. Have I not commanded you Amen. that you must what? Be of 
of good courage. Be strong. You must understand on the way to destiny, if you are not strong, my sister, on the way to destiny in your marriage, oh my God, you will discover that your husband has got shakara. never come. Nothing. 
initiate came. God does not lie. Amen. Lamentation chapter number 3 verse 37. The Bible says, who is he that speaketh a thing when the Lord has not commanded him to do so? According to what I said, the man looked at me and said, this prophet is a liar. He's a liar. Uh, he went for work. They gave him a tender. Uh, a man was applying for the tender for the past four years. I prophesied to him last year. And I told him, he said, by this time around, he did not even reach November. This year, he received a miracle. He called me. He called me last of last week. He said, Papa, I thought your God is a liar. As I'm talking to you now, I am driving cars beyond my size. Amen. Amen. Do you know what, you, do you know what I told him? I said, my son, you will pay for insulting my God. I need a trespass offering. For making my God looking like he's a doubt God. For making my God looking like he's not a doing God. Whatever he says, he shall do. Are you listening to me here? When he says he will bless you, he will bless you. When he says he will lift you, he will lift you. Hold on to his promises. Sit down. Do you think Sarai, she was not discouraged? She was so much discouraged to the point that she made the plan. He said, my husband, look for a girlfriend. What kind of foolishness is that? You, the wife. He said, my husband, I give you. Go. You are a present. Go. You are a present. Sarai gave the husband as a present to Hagar. And they had a child. What manner of encouragement, discouragement is that? The point that you must, you must, you must, you must, you must battle with the promises of God. I understand that God will bless me. Look, I've told you several times, wherever God cannot take me, may I never be there. Amen. Whatever God cannot give me, may I not have it. Amen. Are you listening to me here? If I must die with a gray head, it's better. Amen. Than to eat the bread of sorrow. Are you listening to me here? Amen. Listen, the, the God wants you to encourage yourself. He said, be strong in the Lord. Do not be afraid. Discouragement is a robber of destiny. Amen. Whenever people are discouraged, they stop fighting. Whenever you are discouraged with your husband, you stop praying for him. Say, ah, let him go. Let him go. Whenever I'm discouraged, I stop praying for you. That's the reason every time my look, look, as I'm here, the day I'll get discouraged is the day you'll be defeated. Yes. Are you listening? Amen. So discouragement is a robber of destiny. Never be discouraged on your way to destiny. On your way to your destination, refuse to be discouraged. Amen. Let not the devil hook you with the force of discouragement. Amen. He said, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Encourage yourself. Read. Uh -huh. Do not be terrified. Do uh -huh. not be discouraged. Do, do not be terrified. Do not be moved by the affairs. Amen. Do not be moved by your life circumstance. Do not be moved by how the sickness looks like. Do not be moved by how your situation looks Amen. like. Do not be moved by your financial yes. problem. Do not be moved by your present condition. Amen. Amen, Major. You know, most sick people, I want to show you, most sick people, when I go for prayer life, I'll find a sick, sick, sick person. I say, you, do you believe that God can heal you? <laughs> Just do. You're looking at him. Do you believe Jesus will heal you? Uh, I believe. Do you believe that Jesus will heal you now? You know the way I talk. I talk with force. Amen. Do you
you believe that Jesus will heal you? Papa. Last week, I was in the hospital. They put me on 50 injections. The question is that do you believe? Do you believe you are talking about 50 injections? Hey! I asked a certain lady, I said, You, do you want to be healed? She said, Papa, no. Discourage you, my son. If you don't deal with the robber of discouragement, you will stop coming to church. Yeah. You will go in bar. Yeah. A lot of people did backslidiosis. Backslidiosis left church and they went in the bar. They began to worship God in the bars. They are drinking beer. I can never stop preaching the gospel Amen. because I understand it is the power unto salvation. Am I talking to somebody here? Even when I die, it is better. The Bible says to die is a game. Amen. I've made up a promise. I said, for this gospel, I shall be crucified. For this gospel, I shall be persecuted. Amen. For this gospel. I am ready to go through what oh, yes. Jesus went through. Amen. And I'm not ready to give it up. Amen. Discouragement. People are discouraged. Discouraged. Most of you, look, how do you know that you are discouraged? What you used to do, you are no longer doing it. Yes. You used to pray, you are no longer praying. Yes. You used to come to church very early before the church starts. You are there for intercession. Yes. You are no longer doing it. You used to give. You are no longer giving. Yes. You used to fast. You are no longer fasting. Yes. Why? The robber of discouragement yes. has entered you. Amen. And very soon you are about to lose your destiny. Amen. Very soon. Even what you have, you will lose it. Because the gift that God gave you, it is for service, not for dormant. Amen. You were, look, you were created for service, not to sit. You were created, you are created. For, service. for service. Like me, let me tell you. When I come in church, when I come in church, the moment I don't teach, I don't speak to people, that day I will not sleep. It, this thing is in my blood. Amen. Even when I preach in seven crusades, I will still be strong. It's in my blood. Amen. But for you, you'll be clapping hands for yourself. You say, Oh, I thank God. This Sunday, oh, the church. Hey, it's not me who cleaned it. You are thanking God because you are not the one who cleaned it. Huh? Yeah, people are taking miracles while they are cleaning the dirty of people in the church. Amen. Are you listening to me here? Look, look, look. Discouragement is the ability. To, to, to stop you from what you normally do every time. Amen. Like I prophesy every time. I prophesy every time. Every time I deliver people. When the force of discouragement comes on me, it reduces my force. My force of deliverance. Jesus. Amen. Oh. You are not hearing it. You are not hearing it. Clear, Papa, I'm talking to you. you. Amen. I know what God is doing. Amen. I'm talking to you. Amen. This is your message. Amen. Peter was discouraged. He ran away from the Messiah. His destiny. Whenever you are discouraged, you will run away from your destiny helper. Amen. Okay, what happens when you are discouraged? Right. What happens when you are discouraged? Number one, you will run away from your destiny Amen. helper. Amen. Number one, you will run away from your destiny over. Even those that are meant to help you, you will run away from them. You will call them devils. Yet they are angels. I've ever seen a woman saying that, no, I want to divorce this woman. The day they are divorced, after three months, she realizes, say, ah! I divorced a wrong man. 
and you can't come back again. Whenever you are discouraged, you will run away from your destiny helper. People that are meant to help you. People that are meant to take you on top. People that are meant to sharpen your destiny. To, 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 to equip you. To empower you. You will run away from them. And you will go to wrong people. There were two sons of God in prison. One, his name was Barnabas. One, his name was Barnabas. Another one, his name was Jesus. All of them, they were sons of God. The word Barnabas, it means sons of Abbas. Son of Abbas. And the name Jesus, it means sons of, son of God. So the two sons of God, they were in prison. <laughs> and when people, <laughs> a time came for voting. Say, who must we remove from prison? People, they were, they were screaming, oh, remove Barnabas. Remove Barnabas. What about for Jesus? Kill him. <laughs> kill him. Discouragement will kill your, your, your master. Who, <laughs> discouragement will make you kill your own master. And after you realize, you say, I did something wrong. Judas. After he saw Jesus. After he saw Jesus. He now realizes, that, oh, what I did is a bad thing. Number two. Discouragement will cause you to sell your own destiny helper. And afterwards, you realize that what you did is bad. Discouragement. They voted for Barnabas who has got no power. He did not even heal. There is nothing written about Barnabas. No book of Barnabas. Where have you ever seen a book of Barnabas? <laughs> it is only mentioned once. Barnabas, finish. They voted for Barnabas who was not even the savior and they left Jesus in prison who was their destiny helper. Number three. Whenever you are discouraged you stop doing those things that you used to do at first. In another way, the love of God runs away from your veins. That's the reason the Bible says, get back to your first love. God was your first lover, but you began to look for other lovers. God did not say you must be the sugar of the world. He said you must be the salt of the world. We have got sugar daddies now. And sugar mommy. It's not written. How did you become a sugar mommy? <laughs> How did you become a sugar mommy? <laughs> He said, I'm a sugar mommy. Ah, sugar. When did you become sugar now? The Bible did not say you must be the sugar of the world. He said you must be the salt. You are the one who add color, flavor, and taste to the world. Now you, you stop becoming salt. You now become sugar. Look, look, the Bible says, Get back. Revelation, it says, Get back to your first love. God was your first lover. When you met God at first, you used to pray, you used to go and evangelize. Wherever, even in your office, you were an evangelist. Now you can't even preach to your boss because your boss knows that you are a faith believer. A fake believer. Amen. You can't be even preach to your to your own cousins, to your own brothers, because they know your life is not straight. Amen. Your life is not straight. You are four one nine. Say four one nine. Four one nine. You know four one nine? Ask Jim, I will tell you. He will explain to you. Four one nine. It's a game in Nigeria. He said what? Say, Graham, they will crook you during the day. <laughs> you will lose everything. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Look, you used to come to church on time. You used to dress very well. Now. 
Oh my Jesus. You know now in church we have we have adopted what we call western culture whereby a lady will come in church the other breast it, it, it wants to overload. Over, she can see that something is wrong. There's mountain Kilimanjaro. If they can see that the spaghetti is too small but they are forcing themselves they can see the mountain is too big western culture has come in the church people that they are not afraid of God the time when you got born again at least you are putting on something It's a Western culture. <laughs> Western culture. In a, look, look, we are not Americans. We are from South Africa. We are still Africa. Don't bring Western culture in church. Amen. Some of you, whatever you follow, you say Western culture. <laughs> if we we take Western culture, what you copy, some of you, if we bring it here, you walk naked. One Sunday, you walk. Amen. <laughs> Western culture. You used to dress very well. You used to cover yourself. You used to cover yourself. Now, you are dressing careless. Even the brother in the church cannot look at you twice. Say, Holy Ghost fire. The brother must cover himself. He said, I cover myself in the blood of Jesus. Because the sister, she's a tempter. You used to dress very well. You used to pray. You used to fast. You used to fear the Lord. But now, you live like a universal charger. You are not afraid. Even in the church, you gossip. Even in the church, you walk around like a walking machine. Where is the love of God? The first love that you had, where is it? Amen. Discouragement is a force that will cause you to live like a pagan in the church. If there are people that will go to hell are believers, I'm telling you. You know why? We know the truth. We know the truth and we play with it. Discouragement. The time when you, when you used to come to church. The first day when you got born again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Even your dressing. Very genuine. Very genuine. Very genuine. And now you have known God. Hey. Mosquito net. Do you know it? <laughs> that one with the spot. <laughs> Fishing it. And she'll come and sit next to you and say, Brother, how are you? <laughs> and the brother will not talk right away. The Holy Ghost will touch you and say, Rub, bub, 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 bub. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Where is the first love? You used to sleep in church. You used to sleep on the altar. You used to sleep in church. You used to go for overnight. You used to pray, to fast. You used to pray for your pastor. Now you are no longer doing that. It's a force of discouragement. And very soon you are heading to hell. Because discouragement is a force to go to hell very easily. Yes. Whenever you are discouraged, you stop even giving. Some of you, discouragement has made you to be lame. You are like, you, you, you are a lame man. Your hand is like this. Discouragement. You will see your blessing in order for you to connect. Discouragement will tell you, no, you cannot give. You cannot give. You see? You have been giving all this time. Eh? So, this pastor, it's your money. This pastor, look at him. Even he's getting fat. Because of your money. That's the devil. 
He says, he's getting fat because of your money. Because of your offering. You see, all his shoes that is changing is what you gave. Discouragement. Discouraged pastor. Listen to their message. Discouraged pastor. You can never sit under a discouraged pastor. He will insult you. <laughs> Have you ever seen pastors who insult their members? They insult their members. Hey, you, this is the time you are bringing. Look at you. Hey, are you a man, you? Huh? You is. <laughs> Discouraged pastor. You can never sit under him. Every time you'll be shouting. You do something good, he's shouting. <laughs> he's already discouraged. <laughs> never submit. And I discourage you, Pastor. Amen. You will see me, my life, every time. I'm just like this. Every time. I'm just like this. And I've discovered this. <laughs> Discouraged pastor. And I'm telling you, every pastor who is discouraged, watch, listen to his message. The message has got no genesis. <laughs> it has got only the tale of revelation. Are you listening? Only revelation. Finish. You try to understand what the pastor is talking about, you can't hear. The sermon has got no conclusion. Scattered message is preached by discouraged pastors. No time to invest in your spiritual life. No time to pray. You will preach dry message. One of the ways, if you want to preach dry message, just be discouraged. You will preach it. And your members, you will give them duvet while they are seated under you. It's like you'll be spreading the spirit of sleeping. They'll be like, they'll be like, they'll be seated on the chair like this. saying this, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> receive your miracle. I receive. God says that by tomorrow morning your miracle is settled. <laughs> receive your miracle. Hey, I receive. And then from nowhere, saliva will be come, coming out. While the pastor is preaching. Saliva is coming out. While the pastor is preaching. And then from nowhere, the eyes will close. Bro. And then will be seated to the sister. The, the sister will be like, brother, brother, brother. Hey, Holy Ghost fire! message, every dry message that you preach, it can either encourage or discourage people. Amen. Number four, what happens when you are discouraged? You stop giving. You stop what? You stop giving. Your giving level goes down. Whenever men are discouraged financially, they does not want them to give. Genesis chapter number 26. Let's read. I want to show you. There is a story of Isaac in the land where there is famine. The Bible said in the land there was famine. 
famine. And the Bible says in the land of Gera, there was famine. And the man was ready to go to Egypt. And the Bible says in the night, God appeared unto him and encouraged himself in a dry land. The man was able to sow a seed. If there is a time to sow your seed, it is a time when you are discouraged. It is a time when you are powerless. It is a time when you don't have money. That's a time to sow a seed. Some of you are waiting to sow a seed when you have got money. You will never sow it. The time to sow your money, your, the time to sow your, 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 your revelation, it is the time when you don't have revelation. Amen. That's the reason the Bible says, let the poor say, I am rich. Let those who don't have say, I have. So the Bible says, then in the night, the Lord appeared unto him and encouraged him to sow a seed in a dry place. Can you sow a seed in a dry place? You? Huh? Can you sow a seed when you don't have money? Can you sow a seed when you're having financial problem? Can you sow a seed when things are not alright? In fact, God demands you to sow a seed when you don't have. Amen. You're not here in this. It is the mindset of people. They want to sow seeds when they have. That is not God. God wants you to sow a seed when you have got nothing. That's when God wa wants you to sow a seed. Most people, you sow seeds when you, 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 you have. It's already Jehovah Jireh. It's already Jehovah Jireh. He wants you to sow a seed when you don't have anything. Well, you don't have anything. You don't have a husband. You still come to church. You don't have a husband. You still remain holy. Huh? You still remain holy. You say, no one will ever come to me. You don't have a car. You still trek. You are sowing a seed. Come to church. You have not eaten. You preach powerful sermon. Amen. You don't have a child. You still take care of other people's children. Amen. You sow a seed when you don't have money. <laughs> Turn about you sow a seed when you don't have money. Turn about you sow a seed when you don't have money. In fact, those that don't have money, those are the ones that must sow. <laughs> You're not hearing this. The Bible says, in the land, in a dry place, Isaac took a seed. Aya. In a famine place, in a place where there was nothing, he took a seed. He had revelation. Revelation is the ability that will cause you live a life of supernatural breakthroughs. Revelation is the ability to enjoy in a dry place. Revelation is the ability that will cause you triumph in a place where enemies are all over you. Amen. So do you think that giving is all about when, when you have that's the reason the Bible says even the beds of the air, they don't wake, but I, the Lord, gives them. So those that don't wake, with revelation, if they understand how to connect to, the, to, to God, they will receive. Amen. Even with your money, you will never prosper. It's not money that prospers. It is God, the presence of God. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You know, let me tell you something. My daughter, every time when you have problem, every time when you are discouraged financially, take something. Amen. God does not want you to give when you have. God wants you to give when your pocket has got nothing. Amen. When your account has got nothing. Amen. You begin to test me. Say, God, I test you because Amen. I understand you are Jehovah Jireh. Amen. It is written that you provided for Abraham. It is written that you provided for Jacob. Oh, yeah. Lord, I place my seed on the dry place. Amen. Let this dry place. Read that scripture. Read it. And there was a famine Listen, in the land. Listen, and there was a famine in the land. Uh -huh. Beside the first famine that was in the days Which of Abraham. Which means there were two kind of famine. <laughs> world anger one and world anger two. Amen. <laughs> All of them, they were in one land. Uh -huh. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Uh -huh. And Isaac went unto Abimelech. Listen, in the days of what? Abraham. The father of Isaac, there was famine. Amen. Do you think your problem, your father did not go through it? 
Your problem is a generational problem. Amen. Your father went through it. How do I know that the problem of Isaac is a generational problem? Because Abraham suffered to have a child. Even Isaac suffered to have a child. Amen. Generational problem. Every time you discover that whatever you are going through, it is a, it is same thing in your family. There is a need of a seed. Amen. Whenever you see poverty is following you, you have prayed, you have fasted. Pastors, they have laid the anointing oil, sat on you. Take their mouth, put on your mouth. There are some pastors who are doing that. He said, an anointed kiss. I saw something on Facebook. He said, a prophet healed someone with an anointed, he kissed. He said, Mwah. And she got healed. She fell under the palm. If you are my son, you dare. Your lips will have fire. Are you listening? Amen. Abraham, in the case of Abraham, there was famine, which means whatever you are going through, it is a repetition of history. Do you think, do you think you are the only one who is single? Ask your whole generation. Do you think you are the only one who is sick? Ask your whole family. They will tell you. The way you are struggling financially, ask. They will tell you, you are not the only one. In the days of Abraham, there was a famine. And in the days of Isaac, there was a famine. Amen. What saved Isaac from the famine, from dryness, it is a revelation of sowing. Amen. That's the reason what the Bible says. In the book of uh, Galatians chapter number 6, the Bible says, do not, do, 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 do not mock God, for God cannot be mocked. What, whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. When you plant popo, you don't reap mango. Are you listening to me here? Amen. The same measure of your sowing is what you receive. Are you listening to me here? Amen. That's the reason you need revelation when it comes to the issue of sowing. There are some certain seeds that God will reject with Amen. revelation. Amen. Listen, the, the seeds, there were two seeds of people. Two people, Cain and Abel. God rejected the seed of Cain because of the heart. Amen. God refused. He said, in heaven, I've never eaten vegetables. God said, in heaven, I don't eat muroho. Are you listening? Say Muroho. He said, where is it written that me, I eat vegetables? God said, go for it. Back to sender. <laughs> say back to sender. Back to sender. Go say back to sender. God refused vegetable. And when he looked at the lamb, he said, Aya. Whenever prophets must bless you, you must bring meat. Amen. Amen. If you don't know. Amen. Whenever prophets must bless you, never bring vegetable. Do you know what it means, vegetable? A lamb offering. A blind offering. You can cut vegetable. Cho -cho 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 -cho. Two minutes. God refused vegetable. He said, I don't eat vegetable. I don't. And when God saw the lamb, he said, my God. God was provoked to release a divine deposit. Amen. And this one who brought vegetable, he got jealous. He got discouraged because of his seed. Whenever you give a bad seed, discouragement touches you. That's the reason. You will see people in church. They are prophets of the pocket. They are very accurate. They are fingers. They are too accurate. They don't need to check how much amount is in the pocket. Their hands is a prophet of the pocket. They know this is two rand, three rand, four rand. Five rand. 
and they will go to one run prophetically, very accurate, spot on. They don't miss. They will remove the one run and they will begin to dance braggadociously. Braggadocious, lying to God. And the I profess to somebody You will never deceive God Your hands will never deceive God though. I receive May God discipline your hands I receive A person will have 1,000 rent I don't know how it is I don't know and, and, and normally they, they put the money behind. So the man will make a, a pause. <laughs> He'll be looking at the pastor. And the pastor will be talking about, you must give the best. be like a liar. <laughs> liar. 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 It's a spirit of discouragement. Are you listening to me here? Every time when you remain with the best and you give God the waste, your life will forever be discouraged. Your financial life will forever be discouraged. Amen. That's the reason some of you, your financial life is discouraged. Why? Because you have never given God the best. Amen. You have given God the worst. He has rejected your offering. Your offering cannot multiply. Why? Because it is a discouraged offering. Amen. I've discovered in church There are two colors of money. Number one, green and brown. To show you, it's 10 rand and 20 rand. So two categories of blessing. Two, tell me about 20 rand, 20 rand. and 10 rand. 10, 10 rand. Ah, three levels. Number one, say coin level. Tell about metal level. <laughs> Tell about metal level. And 10 rand level. And 20 rand level. Metal level. <laughs> it's a level. Even your pocket when you are giving, it, it begins to scream at you. K -k -k -k. I refuse. I refuse. The offering is telling you, say, you can never give God that. You can never, you can never, you can never treat God like that. Amen. You need to place a demand. You need to place a value. Amen. That's the reason David said, I cannot give to my God that which does not value me. Amen. Which means place a value to God. Even your boyfriend takes a lot of money. Even your wife takes a lot of money. You take her for Brazilian here, 2,000 rands. Oh my God. Nails. 500 rand, clothes, 5,000 rands, even lipstick, the, the one that looks like you have drunk blood. <laughs> People have got no regard when it comes to giving. Have you discovered that people, they'll go for shopping. They'll spend 20,000 rand at shopping mall. And they'll come on Sunday dancing braggadocia. That's the reason God is bending your waist. Because you are a liar. Amen. You'll be dancing one side. But... <laughs> the music is going to be like... <laughs> on Saturday... You will go with your family. With your family. This, this, this place. So, Monte Casino. Monte Casino. You will sit there. Chop money. You will not be. Say, chop money. You will chop money. After chopping money, even what belongs to God, you will chop it. And then on Sunday, time for offering, you look like a, a wizard. A wizard that has been caught. <laughs> like, the prophet will be talking, offering time. Like, <laughs> giving time. You can even see, have you discovered during time for offering, you will see some wrinkles that you have never seen. 
is a spirit of poverty manifesting. Are you listening? Amen. On Saturday you were spending. You did not remember God. You did not know that God is the one who has been giving, giving you the ability to make money. And you took what belongs to him. And that's the reason. You'll be discouraged financially. Listen to me. You will look in your Christian work. If you don't place a standard, if you don't place a value between you and your God, I promise you, financially, you will never go anywhere. Because financial blessing is not about prayer. Financial blessing is not about attendance. Financial blessing is not about how far you rise you are. Financial blessing is about connectivity to God. Amen. God refused. He refused vegetable. He said, no. For where? Back to sender. Bring me meat. And when God saw meat, he began to release a blessing. Look at your offering. Look at your offering. One year. Let's do some calculation. Give me, give me what? Let's look at something here. In one year, there's how many Sundays? 50? 53. 53, eh? And every month, we have got four Sundays. Isn't it? Huh? Which means in a year, how many Sundays do we have? Huh? 53 Sundays, isn't it? Now, imagine every month, you come to church every Sunday, four times. Let's just put it four times. Some other months is five times. Okay. Sunday. Your offering, it was 20 rand. Eh? Second, 10 rand. It has dropped. Third, 5 rand. Waste. This is 30, this is 35, this is 37. 37 what? 37 rands in four Sundays. There's something wrong with you. Now, let's do like this. 50, 50, 53. Let's do some calculation. What is that? 53 times 37. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hey, 53 times 37. You went to school. Huh? Okay, let's let's say, let's say, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, let's say like this. 37 by 2. Okay, let's find. Uh-huh. One? One thousand? Okay. So this is for, a, for one year. This is your offering for one year. Huh? How much is it? Four hundred? Four hundred and forty-four. Hey! Four hundred. Aya and forty-four. My Jesus, Jesus, imagine 444 rands a year. Somebody bewitched you in one year to give 444 rands to God for 12 months for 365 days. God blessing you every day. God protecting you every day and you decide to give him 444. My Jesus. 
you are an embarrassment. Okay. This is your offering, eh? For the year. For one year. Congratulations. Clap hands for yourself. Clap hands for yourself. Now. In the same offering. In the same offering of God. Of God. You remove sweet. To buy for your children. In the same money for God. Fuel. To come to church. In the same money for God. When you finish the service. You will need to buy. Hot dog. Or KFC. So we can say that in. In one year. You give 200 rand. 200 rand. Hey. 200 rand. Can, for sure. Okay, you know, right now, people, they are thinking in their mind, they say, Papa, why are you bringing this topic of money? No, I'm showing you. Plus, on top, you don't even give your tithe. That's the reason every time when you lift up your hands, you say, Lord, here I come. God assigned Angel Michael to say, catch the robber, there he comes. My God. Imagine. 200 rand. The whole year. Are you okay? Can't you see that you are discouraged financially? Can't you see that you are having financial problem? That's the reason I'm telling you that. Look, look. You need to place a standard. Whenever you discover that your tithing record. It is not okay. Something Something has gone wrong. Some other people, they, they don't give tithe. They take tithe. They give to their girlfriend. Your girlfriend very soon will come and visit you on your hospital bed. Very soon. You come and visit you on your hospital. You'll be like a stick, a cooking stick. People are eating money for God. Tithe. Tithe. People, chop tithe. Chop tithe. Chop tithe. Chopping tithe. If there is something that protects my life and my destiny, it is tithe. Amen. I have seen the faithfulness of God. By this time, I would have been nothing. But Amen. because of our faithfulness in the area of tithe, God has been our provider. Amen. God has been our provider. Amen. He's been so good to me. Whereby people, they said, <laughs> people said, Didi Isaac, he's finished. He's finished. God was good to us. Amen. God was our provider. Amen. When do you give your tithe? When do you give your tithe? Do you mean that God does not bless you? In fact, if you want, keep your tithe. Because scriptures can never be broken. Because whenever you keep that which belongs to the Lord, you end up becoming discouraged financially. Amen. The devil will use, he will use what you do to stand against you. Amen. That's the reason you start a business. Just from where thieves come, they collect your goods. You go to China, you reach by the border. He say, ah, these goods, we don't permit them in our country. So we are going to seize them. Haven't you ever seen misfortune after misfortune? You buy a car just from nowhere. Let me tell you, if you don't pay tithe direct, you will pay it indirect. Amen. It's either your children, they will be also collecting from you every week hospital. I have seen men who are too stubborn to give tithe. Very soon, they are tithing on the hospital bed. They are tithing on the hospital bed. They are tithing with the debts. <laughs> Every week the creditors, they are on the door. Come, come, come. And they are telling their children, they say, when the creditor come, tell them that I'm not here. <laughs> the child also. 
the credit account. Where is your father? I said, my father said. <laughs> that when you come, I should tell you he's not here. <laughs> Let me tell you, do you know why I love to sell it? You know why I love to laugh? Because I'm teaching you reality. I'm teaching you reality. Some of you love, you love, you love serious teaching. Thou said the Lord. I feel the anointing. It's moving. Oh. Hey. Holy. Holy. happy the word of God can enter you. Amen. Set a standard in your tithing. Amen. Let me tell you. A certain man, this man is one of a billionaire here in Africa. His name is Tangota from Nigeria. He has a cement fa factory and is one of the person who inspired me to start a cement factory. I looked at his life. The man is a Muslim. Do you know that Muslims are so much wealthy than believers? They don't have power. They don't heal anyone. Their power is only giving. They will enter a community. They will go everywhere. Give them food for free. For free. Their power is giving. But believers, they will give stinginess. Stinginess. They want to sting even their pastor. <laughs> he said, This pastor must die. <laughs> he said, This pastor, last time, they will begin to count. <laughs> you know, there are people when they give their, their tithe. <laughs> we have got police officers and accountants, they have got calculators. They are calculating. So how much? How much is the seed there? How many people? One, two, three. Oh, oh they, are, they are about 30. Mm, so 30. Mm, mm. This is 30,000. <laughs> so no, now they have made a lot of money. They have made a lot of money. So I'll stop giving. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Whenever you are in church, you become, you become like a tax collector. You are a Pharisee. Yeah, people count. And you know, sometimes when I look at you, I know your mind. Sometimes when I look at you, I know your mind. You cannot lie to me. I'm your father. Amen. Every father knows his child. Though. Amen. I know you, you are blind. I know you, you are bad. Every father knows his children. I know when people, they come here, another person, you'll be behind there, will be calculating me. one who called me, I can Amen. promise to you, I can tell you on my altar, on an exalted altar, Amen. with oil over my head, I can bet you that not even a day have I ever eaten your money. I'm telling you this. Not even a day. Do you know why? Do you know why? If I want to eat your money, I know. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. If I want to eat your money, I will eat your money. And you'll be laughing. While I'm eating your money, you'll be laughing. Be like, Papa, it's good, oh. Eh? It's good. I'll be eating while you are laughing. But do you know why? Most of you I cannot eat your money because I understand your level, your financial level. Even the church, this church, this church, is the church. I, I can tell you. You're going to ask all my financial my financial manager, they will tell you, not even a day have I ever gone to you. Stand up. Have I ever gone to you for money? I'm asking you. You must
Just tell the people here. Maybe I call you say, hey, so now how much? Hey, how much has entered? They are pastors when it comes to money. Yeah. I was in Livingston. Stand up. I was in Livingston. How much money did I give? Did I remain with any money? No. Huh? They were even forcing me to say, Daddy. Please remain with something. I said, it's, it's okay. Yes. Give them. Give yes. them. Sure. Give them. Sit down. Papa. That one. That one. Eunice. Huh? Are you the one who was telling me that daddy, no, no. It's not supposed to be like this. What were you telling me? He said. You said what? You give everything away. I give everything away. I give everything away. I went to the airport. Pelu, pelu. Busy confessing. My wife, she's waiting for me. My child is waiting for me. My rentals are waiting for me. My fuel is waiting for me. Because I don't, I don't, I don't use the car by prayer. Wow. My church is waiting for me. My pastors are waiting for me. All of them. I'm telling you. Let me tell you. It is the lowest thinking to think like your pastor eats your money. It's the lowest thinking to think like your pastor or your giving has made your pastor to be rich. It's the lowest thinking. I can tell you. I can tell you. I'm on the Me. I'm one of my weakness is when you give me money. When you give me money, I will not stay with it. After a few minutes, when you ask me, it's already gone. You know why? It's because God put a lot of people around me. He put a lot of people around me. And I don't rejoice to see others suffer. I will sacrifice even with a little, with a drop of my sweat. To give them. I said, take, go and be happy. That is the heart of a father. I can tell you all my sons when they come. I said, take, take, go. Go to your branch. Take, go to your branch. That's the heart of a father. A stingy man can never experience prosperity. A stingy man can never enjoy the goodness of the Lord. A stingy woman, she will never give birth. Because when the children, small, small children come to your house, you hide even porridge. Lastly, but not the least, before I close, we have dealt with the forces of discouragement. Do you know, look at me, do you know why some children, they don't get fat? Huh? I will tell you. Do you know why some children, they don't get fat? <laughs> You want to know? It's because when the mother has prepared the food, she's the first one to eat. And she gives the leftovers to the child. Whenever you as a mother, when you prepare the food, your child must be the priority. Your, my priority is you. That's the reason I must sleep late for you to be blessed. I must come to church. I must prepare a mess. every week. I must bless you. I must feed you. Some of you, you, you are beaten. Your husband wants to chase you. I must intervene. My son, please. This is my daughter. Look, she will change. I know even if when you don't know how to cook, you are cooking water. Burnt offering. <laughs> Burnt offering. <laughs> burnt offering. <laughs> you are cooking burnt offering. I must at least use wisdom. He said, my son, she's a good woman. Yet I know. I'll call her on the side and say, my daughter, you must change. I know. You see the work I have? It's a big work. 
It's a big work. Some of you will call me in the night, Papa, I'm involved in a car accident. I must start work again. I can tell you that I've got lesser time to sleep. There are things that I go through. If I tell you, you will not sit here. What I go through. I was telling him, I said, all the days of my life, I live a life that is different. My days are different. They are very different. At least you have got time to go to a mall with a short. Me with a short. The day I'll enter that mall with a short, I'll find myself on news. <laughs> it's a short, short prophet. <laughs> Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. Put a two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Put a two hands for Jesus. <laughs> clap your hands. Clap your hands. <laughs> you hear my son? Short prophet. <laughs> now listen. In that scripture that we read, the Bible said, then David encouraged himself in the Lord. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Those that are watching, encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself. Every Sunday, go to church. There are some people, they have stopped coming to church. They say that us, we worship God on the TV. Where do you give your offering? And your tithe? The Bible says, do not forget fellowshipping with one another. It's important. You say that you, you don't want to come to church? You watch me on Facebook. Even on Facebook as you are watching me, I can't pray for you. I can't lay my hand. I will lay my hand on you by faith. But come to church. Don't be discouraged. Some of you are saying that, oh, pastors, pastors, they are very bad. Test this pastor. Test this pastor. You will see the goodness of God. Amen. Lift your hand. I want you to pray against the force or the robber of discouragement. Lift your hands. I want you to pray against the robber of discouragement. Lift your hands. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. 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 Rasupre eta padali kita atopa masope rikata rosote paroto shepre eta la bracha da rekata la kita atalamate roto eta pala gadosa Lord every roba every roba every roba in the name of Jesus Father we are dealing with every roba every roba of our destiny every roba of our lives every roba of our lives of our destiny in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Leka Baro Sayakabanda Ligisa Barunde Sahia. Lord, in the time, in the time when we are discouraged, in the moment when we are discouraged, where we will encourage ourselves in you, O oh God. We will encourage ourselves in your word, O oh God. We will encourage ourselves in prayer. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God, we deal with every rope of our destiny, every rope of our lives, of God, every rope of our marriage, of God, every rope of our finances, of God. We deal with them by the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Para sapali che passo le madre venosche le tuze vetosa la cavaro se ye andro venosa capade chise le gondre su pali le caro saiete e le maro so mani e cajas yes holy spirit holy spirit we deal with every robber of our destiny every robber of our destiny every robber of this carriage men of God by the power of the Holy Ghost, we decree and we declare. Every robber of this current man of God, we deal with that robber. We deal with that robber. From today, O oh God, 
when we are weak, when we are discouraged, we will encourage ourselves in the Lord. We will encourage ourselves in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every form of discouragement of God in our lives of God, in my life of God, in my hair of God, be destroyed. We arrest you now. We arrest you now in the name of Jesus, King of glory, by your power, by your authority, by your grace of God. Every form. Discouragement, be broken up, be destroyed from right now. We decree and we declare, we decree and we declare by your word of God. We are set free, we are set free, we are set free, we are set free. Every form of discouragement, we destroy you, we break you. You, sir, come in. Come in. I receive. It's up to you to tell me. At least I've pointed at you. The Lord has used me to point to point you. Yes. It's up to you to tell me. Prophesy. I need to do something on this young man. God must change your story. Amen. I receive. I receive. I receive. It was in the spirit when I was taken in a place. When I was taken in a place, I traveled in the spirit and I was in the spirit. I was seeing people. As people they were speaking, I heard a language. Because as I was hearing the language, it's like on your head it was written. See, oh, like Congo DRC. Congo DRC. Yes. yes. Huh? I'm Are you from Congo, Congo DRC? Yes, yes. You are from Congo DRC? Yes, yes. Then, yes. or the It was in the spirit when I saw you. You're supposed to receive a blessing last year. Yes. Because I see a letter like a paper that you have. Yes. I see a paper yes. of money, money. You are waiting for money to be released. Yes, yes. I yes. see you have a paper. Yes, yes. Bring a paper. Bring it here. Bring it here. Prophesy! Major prophet in the eyes. It is a paper for what? It's a paper for money. I have a project. Huh? I have a project for for. Uh, I have a project for for opening for a, a company, something like that. You have a project. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. You have been waiting for this money. Yes. Because in the spirit, Komelo Jali Ikarusha Bali Ikasozo. Receive. Because the Lord says He's going to make him to be a millionaire. Amen. Because I as I was here. I saw seven doors opening for you. Yes, I receive. I One receive. door, I, I saw receive. it in the UK. Yes. The other door, I saw it in Australia. I the other door, I saw it in... Major! Say, I receive. I receive. Say, I receive. I receive. Stand here. Where is your junior brother, Trezo? He's in Kinshasa. Huh? Kinshasa. Trezo? Yes. He's in Kinshasa? Yes. Do you know somebody, Kalush Abalia, Cedric? Yes, I know. Cedric. Yes, I know. Huh? Yes. Because as I was looking at you in the spirit, I saw it's like you were struggling a lot. You are struggling a lot. Yes. Even you wanted to leave this land. Yes. You wanted to go overseas. Is it true? Yes. I saw you by in Pretoria, in Pretoria, yes. at Home Affairs. Yes, yes, yes. Major Professor. As a man of God, yes, because yes. you want a spiritual father, yes, yes, that's the reason you came here, yes. 
prophesy. I, I even sleep two days outside just for that. Huh? I even sleep two days outside just for that. Just for? For looking a spiritual father. Just for looking for a spiritual for father. One, yes. Do you know, is it David? David? Yeah. Who is this one? David. David. Yes. Who is this one? It's my friend, my, my very one. Friend. He's a pastor. Yes, he's a pastor. Huh? Yes. Prophesy! You, you are sick. You, you are sick. There's something wrong. Huh? Yes. There's something wrong with your mind. Yes. This man, they manipulate his mind. I see his mind. He, his mind is like, they took his mind. And they took it in a shrine. When he was very young, the mother took him to the witch doctor. Come here. Come here. Stand here. Stand here. Stand here. Is he okay? Is he okay in the mind? Huh? This is what I'm saying. This man is not okay. His mind is having a problem. Now you, as I was looking at you in the spirit, I saw oil dropping on I your receive, head. I receive. I receive. When I saw oil dropping on his head, the Lord says, all the seven doors he shall enter without fail. I, I prophesy I over your life. I receive. Wherever you want to go, I receive. I open doors for you. I receive. I open doors for you. I receive. Shall I receive it? I receive it. Shall I receive it? I receive it. You young lady, come here. Do you know? Come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Do you know somebody who was born in April? Yes. April. Who is born in April? My brother. Do you have somebody who is a landlord of the Henebe who is born in uh, July? My mom. Your mom. Yes, she was born. Your mom. Yes. Your mom. Yes. She's born in July. Yes. Do you have somebody who is born on the 17th? 17, 17, 17. 17. Come here, I want to tell you. Because in the spirit, when I looked at you, the Lord says, I must open up the doors like this man. Because I saw also seven doors opening for you. I receive. Because, wait, wait, wait. Who is the number three? Who is the number three? My brother. Your brother? Yes. Huh? He was born in April. Your brother? Yes. He's born in April? Yes. Somewhere? Yes. Somewhere? Yes. Professor Major! Is it somewhere? Yes. Is it somewhere? Yes, but Somewhere? Yes, Who is my, like Mar... 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 That's your name? Yes. Who is Paul? My younger sister. Your younger sister? Yes. Who is a nurse? My sister, my elder sister. Your, your elder sister, yes. she's a nurse. Marusha Bali Ikadush. I see marriage for her. I, I see marriage for you in September. I Are you just looking? Ah, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. You, look at me. Don't, don't look like we have talked. Have we ever talked? Or what I'm telling you, you have ever told me? No. Ah, say to the people. No. Maybe we may look like we talked. Because some of you, you think, when I came there, what did I tell you? What did I, did I ask you anything? Did I ask you anything? No, no, you didn't. Huh? No, you didn't. Did I ask you? No. Or maybe you told me anything? No. Prophesy! Where is somewhere? It's in Limpopo. Huh? It's in Limpopo. Is it Polokwane what? No, Venda. Is it Venda? Yes. Do you have somebody? Oshaka Lusha Balia. I receive it. You are quiet because it's not you. Prophesy! Prophesy, Papa. Look, whenever you familiarize prophecy, you will remain while God is speaking. Come here. Shambro to show Shadaba. I receive. Stand up. Come here. <laughs> Lift him. Whatever you desire, your doors will open. You will never struggle. Wherever I have been, you will go there. I oh, you are not receiving your people. I receive. Whatever takes me up, I receive. will take you up. I receive. In the name of Jesus. I receive. The grace to handle money. I I see a drip. I see a drip 
Okay, I see a drip on you. You there here? Huh? I see a drip. A drip on you. Do something, Daddy. Do something, Papa. Do Listen. something, Papa. I see a drip on you. There is a sickness inside you Do that we need to Papa. do with. Because I see the way it's like what happened to your mom, to your mom, to your mom must not happen to you. Because I see the spirit of cancer, the spirit of cancer over your family. Huh? Is it true? My mom died of pneumonia. Uh -uh. No, no, no. I said what happened to your mom. I see a spirit of cancer. Have you heard me? Because as I'm looking in the spirit, I saw cervical cancer. It's like one side here, you feel pain. Here. Yes, I'm huh? in pain here all the time. Prophesy. Listen. God they say I must deliver you because I see cervical cancer. I see the doctor writing a report saying that cervical cancer. Daddy, I was planning to go to the hospital. Huh? I was planning to go to the hospital. You were what? I was planning to go to the hospital. You were planning to go to the hospital. Major. You were planning to go to the hospital. Yes. I see. I see your firstborn. Do you have children? Yes. Huh? Yes.